Welcome to Coaching Uncut, a special series on the Unstoppable Woman podcast, where I take you behind the scenes and give you a peek into the private coaching I do with my clients. All of these coaching calls have been recorded with the permission from my clients who have generously allowed me to share these with you as a way of helping more people in this world. They give you access to master level coaching and the opportunity to learn the lessons that they're learning right along with them. Please keep in mind that these recordings are not studio productions and the audio quality may be less than ideal, but the content will take you far and help you become unstoppable. With that, listen in and learn. Welcome to part two of our series on how guilt and shame can really affect your business and your life. It can create a sense of suffering that doesn't have to be there and that can actually stop your growth and the business results that you want. So listen into this episode as I coach my client on why heaven is your natural state and how to create that for yourself so that you can have exponential success. Okay, with that, listen in and enjoy. Good morning. Hi. So bringing this back to where we left off on Thursday, you know, we were having a discussion around things like, you know, the difference between pain and suffering and how suffering is generally caused by, you know, attaching some kind of guilt or shame to the situation, making myself wrong or someone else wrong or whatnot. And then we left off talking about, you know, the the notion that, or the truth rather, that being in a state of heaven is our natural state, you know, and that suffering is only quote unquote only due to guilt or shame and I was challenging in part for my own understanding deeper understanding so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause pause you there yeah yeah. suffering is not only because of guilt and shame it's also because you're expecting it to be different than it is okay Mm. so guilt and shame is a huge part of it this is wrong i'm making this thing that i'm experiencing is not how it's supposed to be and i am wrong or someone else is wrong you're either guilty yourself or shaming someone else right Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and in that creates a lot of suffering but please continue okay yeah no the good call out thank you um yeah so i i was challenging and wanted to hear your take on just the premise that being in a state of heaven is our natural state. I want to understand that better than just me being like, oh, yeah, that sounds good, you know, okay, gotcha. (laughs) And also, because I feel a challenge about, well, is that really true? You know, how do we know that? I will get challenged on that by clients, and I don't feel I would know what to say because I'm not straight with it myself. Do you know what I mean? I do know. Okay. So the question on the table is, how do I know for sure that heaven is our natural state? Exactly. Okay. Look to nature. Does nature suffer? No. Nature doesn't want to die. The antelope doesn't want to be eaten. There's pain when they're eaten, but they don't suffer. We know they don't suffer because... That's a good question. I mean, and where my mind went was, cows do suffer when they're put through a lengthy death march. They know exactly what's happening. Okay? Mm -hmm. So time plays a factor there. But there's pain, but I don't think there's suffering. From my understanding... Animals don't suffer. Well, perhaps the same way that's like animals aren't sitting there overanalyzing. 
They just are. Correct. Because <laughs> you have to yeah. think about where suffering comes from, right? Yeah. I mean, a rabbit, a little bunny, afraid to be eaten by the dog, right, is in fight, flight, mm-hmm. freeze. One of those three things. Right. It's very responsive to the moment. It's an appropriate reaction. I'm going to be eaten. Right. I need to survive. It's not thinking about the future or the past. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not making and, things up in correct. so doing, you know, right. Correct. Now, let's look at an infant, a human infant. Yeah. They cry a lot. <laughs> yes, they do. Okay. But they're crying because they want attention for food and a better butt. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm crying mm-hmm. for that too. <laughs> right. 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 But and then humans are meaning making machines and most humans are child reared by manipulation. Cutting off the love and the child knows that they're gonna get food and survive if that love is flowing. Mm-hmm. And when that love gets cut off, then they have to start making meaning and this is where our brains are different than other animals' brains. Because of making meaning. Mm-hmm. That must mean I'm defective. The dolphin doesn't say that. The dolphin might be like, oh, I need to learn to swim up, you know, keep up with mom. Okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just is. Mm-hmm. No story attached to it. Right. So that comes back to, so just, just sticking to that example, the child takes note that the love has stopped flowing in some way. Mm -hmm. And as a meaning-making machine, that child tries to explain to herself, you know, why has the love stopped? And you can't make the thing that Something I did or didn't do. Right. You're not going to make mom or dad wrong because that's where the food comes from. That's where survival comes from. So it has to be, it's not them, it's me. Mm. And then step out of this part of our conversation and think about it. If you lost your eyesight, would you suffer? And if so, why? I'm not suggesting that it would be good or, you know, or you want to have this. But, like, why would that feel bad to you? Because I feel like joy, things that give me joy, like, being beautiful. Right. So yeah. that's a thought that has a right. perspective that leads to you falling out of heaven. Do you get that? It's common. Most people would agree with you. Right. Because if I were to simply accept that I've lost the sense of sight and not not make that, that not a good bad or bad. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It just it just is. I now have to rely on my other senses more. So it might not have been my choice of like what I would choose to have happen, but I don't have to suffer. Correct. I totally get it. I totally get it intellectually. It's like as I'm thinking about it though, that example, I'm like, but I would suffer because the reality is I would feel sad. But I know what you're saying. The suffering comes because of the thoughts that I'm having about the circumstance, Mm -hmm. it's not intrinsic to the circumstance. Correct. You don't Mm -hmm. have to suffer because you're blind. You may, but there's nothing about blindness in and of itself that equals a life of suffering. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, I'm not going to make anyone wrong who's doing that, but there's nothing intrinsic to it. Is just different than your expectation. Yeah. So I think oh, the next logical question yeah. is how do we keep our expectations high, right, towards what we want, but not be disappointed, right? Because disappointment is that suffering, right? And it would be at mm-hmm. all different levels, okay? 
Yeah, and there, there, right there is another rub for me. I've gotten a lot better at it, but, you know, when I realize how much time either I preemptively lower my expectation because I don't want to feel the disappointment of not meeting the high expectation, this is going to get confusing, but it's... I understand. You're saying, I don't want to feel the suffering. I don't want to feel the disappointment, a.k.a. the suffering. So I lower my expectations. Right. And yet, I still feel the suffering because I haven't achieved the greatness really that's part of my spirit. Right. It's not the spiritual DNA that's inside of me. It's true desire. It's a lowered desire. Right. It's like... Yeah, but if like, you what can do I learn really this? think I can earn this month versus what I really mm-hmm. desire to earn this month? Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a tightrope in the beginning. You have to expect what yeah. you want, keep it present, keep it really present. Because what happens is your mind starts saying, oh, we're not going to make it, we're going to be disappointed, I have to fog you out, right? Yeah. I have to distract you. So that's why the creation playbook is so important. And then if you make it, you moderate your response. And if you don't make it, you moderate your response. Like, you respond. You're not reactive. You don't go into Mm -hmm. suffering. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if I get what I want, I'm also – there's something you said there that maybe you'd be like, wait, what? Both. Options are responses rather than reactions, okay? Mm-hmm. So okay. if you feel great about making a sale or making your numbers, that's great, okay? But put mm-hmm. it in perspective, okay? Like, you don't have to feel great. The outside circumstance is not what should be determining your reaction. Mm-hmm. That is a limitation. Okay. Okay. Bye. See okay. you soon. Later this okay, week. bye. Okay. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this episode of Coaching Uncut. Let us know in the comments what you learned and how you can apply it to your own life and business. We absolutely love hearing from you. And we also love receiving your feedback. So thank you in advance for your likes and reviews. They really help us connect with more women who need this information to help them scale. So much appreciated for that and taking the time to do that. Now, if it's go time for you and you're ready to scale your life and your business, then I want to offer you up something. I want to offer you access to our Be Unstoppable Facebook group. We drop daily and weekly resources in this free group that show you exactly how to scale, what you need to be doing differently. So if you want access to that group and it's go time for you, go to theunstoppablewoman.com slash Facebook group, and that will redirect you there. So theunstoppablewoman.com slash Facebook group, no spaces, And start by getting your copy of the scale plan, which lives there. And it's totally free. So go do that now. And then tune in to the next episode and continue to be unstoppable. 